Today I will tell you the evidence that proves the Godosei have officially declared war on Shanks and the red-haired pirates. And would this mean solving the biggest plot hole in One Piece? Why did the government never go after Luffy and his devil fruit? If you want to know the answer, make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video to find out what this means for the chaotic future of One Piece. In chapter 956, we see a conversation during the sword reviews. Kobe and Drake are discussing the chaotic events. Drake tells Kobe that he saw CP0 at the capital of Wano. Kobe says, what? Why are they in Wano? Drake says, I don't like the implications. It would mean the government is coming to pirate let Wano to conduct deals of some kind. My mind went blank for minutes after I saw it. So now let's quickly break down the dichotomy between Sword and CP0. CP0 is also known as Cypher Pole Ages 0. Many fans and theorists have pointed out a relation between ages also referring to a Greek shield. So Sword and Shield. Two sides of the same coin as they are both secret branches of the government that also infiltrate and have their private missions. CP0 is a branch that directly serves the Celestial Dragons. They have direct ties to the Gordosei as we've seen in Wano. Now that we know that CP0 and the Gordosei are making deals with a crew like Kaido, it leads us to an even more absurd implication. We know they were secretly in connections with Doflamingo. This may have been why CP0 now goes and directly has to deal with Kaido in person. So if they are so willing to deal with these twisted monsters like Orochi, Doflamingo, and Kaido, it makes you wonder what other pirates are they secretly making deals with. And the answer is actually pretty obvious. How about Red Haired Shanks? Shanks is someone that the Gordosei have always seemed to treat differently from other pirates. They set up an exclusive meeting at the Pangea Castle during the Reverie, and even before in Jaya, we have hints that Shanks and the Gordosei have had a relationship in the past. They've mentioned how Shanks does not have the ambition of conquering the world. So if they're willing to make deals with the Warlords and with Kaido, there's no doubt in my mind that they will be able to cooperate with Shanks in a very high stakes deal. Shanks is actually a pirate that can be reasoned with and he's much more civilized than the Kaidos and the Doflamingos of the world. The Gordosei treat Shanks very similarly to Doflamingo. Shanks and Doflamingo both have a forbidden knowledge combined with Shanks' massive power and this knowledge of Nika and the other conspiracies hidden by the government. Shanks can use all of this as leverage to get what he wants or simply set up a discussion with the five elders. And what exactly did Shanks and the Gordosei speak about during the reverie? Is most likely either Blackbeard or Luffy, since Shanks says that he is here to speak about a certain pirate. This theory revolves around the idea that they spoke around Luffy and his devil fruit, the Nika fruit that Shanks knew about and the one that they were hiding from the world. The evidence for Luffy being the pirate that they were talking about is that Shanks said that they will see each other soon and he was holding Luffy's new bounties. And similarly, Eam also had Luffy's bounty in his hands. And then the next time that we see the Gordosei, they are discussing the reverie events and they begin talking about the Devil Fruit Awakening, Luffy's fruit that had not been awakened in centuries. So what if Shanks convinced the Gordosei that Luffy's fruit would awaken during his battle with Kaido at Onigashima? Otherwise, how would they know Luffy was going to awaken? Luffy was still only in gear 4. And so this is something that I've really been thinking about for a while now. Next, we have to address the massive plot hole of the Nika fruit's existence and how this theory could resolve that plot hole. After Luffy transforming to Gear 5, we get the reveal of the true nature of this devil fruit. We find out that Shanks stole this devil fruit from the government and it's actually a mythical zone, the human fruit, model Sanga Nika. The Sanga Nika is the same name who was so dangerous that the prison guards who told who's who about the legend vanished from existence. The ultimate power of creativity and creation, a truly ridiculous power. Shanks tells Whitebeard that he bet his arm on the next generation, showing that he is going to place all his fate into Luffy. Since he knew about Nika, he may have assumed that the fruit chose him and let it play out as it can be seen as Luffy's fate or destiny. Once this happened, Shanks did whatever he could to allow Luffy to live on and since he spoke of the same words as Roger, Shanks would make sure that Luffy would become the Pirate King and awaken the Gear 5th ability. The man Roger and Odin were waiting for has finally arrived at Wano. The prophecies that they read in Laugh Tale have become true. Now the biggest question is why did the Gordosei never kill Luffy? or capture him if they always wanted the devil fruit. They could have easily dealt with him in the pre time skip when he was weak and powerless. The truth is, the Gordosei themselves stood by and watched things play out. This was really all they could do because they had agreed to a deal with Shanks. Even in Sabaody, the only reason they sent Kizaru was because Luffy punched the Celestial Dragon, not because they wanted to capture him. Shanks out of the deal states that if they kill Luffy, it will mark an instant declaration of war. The Celestial Dragons against the Red Hair Pirates. And on top of all this, if the Gordosei were willing to cooperate with Shanks, then he would also help them with a very important important task, and that would be maintaining balance throughout the One Piece world. Shanks has a relationship with Mihawk, the most powerful warlord. He can maintain peace there. He's powerful enough to stop a war, and he's the man who interferes and tells Whitebeard to stop Ace. He's willing to clash with Yonko, he met with Kaido before Marine Ford, and he challenged Blackbeard Pirates at Marine Ford so that the war could end quickly for the Marines. Sengoku even says, only because it's you red haired, implying that there is a very specific reason to why he's willing to cooperate with Shanks and not the other Yonko. So we see a consistent pattern with Shanks, and I believe that he's been 
and maintaining peace with the Gordose and having a controlling balance with the great powers. But now with the warlord system being destroyed and Luffy, Big Mom, and Kaido clashing for power in Wano, even the Yonko system is coming to an end. When Whitebeard fell, Blackbeard, who was a very ambitious individual, is now rising in the world. The world is spiraling into a chaos, just like Doflamingo said. Doflamingo was another character who was holding the strings together just like Shanks. So when Luffy meets up with Shanks and Shanks find out that CP0 interrupted the battle and they are after Luffy's head, it will finally be the time. No more peace. It's time for Ben Beckman and Shanks to finally unleash and go all out against the government that broke their promise. If you look at the Gordosei's conversation, they say, we even reached Kaido and lost one of our best agents. Are we sure our priorities are straight? So if they're already reacting like this, could you imagine the worry on their face when Shanks finds out? Shanks might have told both Kaido and Whitebeard that it was not the right time for a full on war. This war seems more and more like a prophecy the more that we continue the story and when Whitebeard dies he speaks of this war that Sengoku fears. We're talking about something that will make Marine Ford look like child's play and we also know that the revolutionaries were planning to declare war on the celestial dragons. That event might have been what starts the massive world war that everyone is preparing for. If Shanks truly is a god of war, it's important to note that his role is not only going to be stopping them. The final arc of One Piece will be the pirates teaming up. This includes Shanks, Luffy, alongside all of their allies and I can even see members of the Beast Pirates like King, Alang with Luffy and maybe even Kaido Curry from Big Mom's crew. And who knows, maybe even Kaido and Big Mom just straight up want to team up and go against the government like they planned with the new Onigashima project. The hints of Shanks and Luffy meeting are coming sooner than we realize, most likely during the next arc after Wano. This means that at one point maybe all of the Yonko will be able to go against the elites of the world, with Big Mom, Kaido, Blackbeard, Luffy, and Shanks all going against the government in their different ways. With the three powers dissolving, starting with the Warlords and now a different faction setting up within the government government being CP0 and Sword, all that's really left is the Yonkos in the New World. We already saw this start to change with the alliance of Big Mom and Kaido and now there are former warlords who have teamed up with Luffy. We have Jinbei and Law. I know many people think that Shanks could be evil but I've never subscribed to this idea. I definitely think that he's on Luffy's side and a big reason why the government did not go after him was because Shanks was able to make a deal or blackmail them or at least just threaten them in some way. And you never know, maybe Ben Beckman was the one who planned all of this and I still think it's possible that he could have been the one who secretly gave the Gomu Gomu no to Luffy. And now to die deeper into this topic surrounding the Gordosei and Shanks, let me pass it to my guy, Prince of All Anime. Thank you so much Preach for having me and I gotta say this topic is very interesting. One thing I did want to point out is that this deal with Shanks and the Gorosei is very possible only because of how self-obsessed the Gorosei are in terms of power. They most likely made this deal with Shanks because they severely underestimated Luffy just like everyone else. They thought that there's just no way the Devil Fruit would awaken for Luffy so they went ahead and made this deal with Shanks. Whereas Shanks was the complete opposite and he knew that Luffy had the potential to not only awaken his Devil fruit but also become the new pirate king. We see a completely opposite mirrored situation in this deal, with one side having full faith and the other with complete doubt. We can even see a huge example of where this deal had so much influence in the story, and that's at Marineford. Shanks was able to manipulate this deal he had with the Gorosei and stopped a huge force that could massively alter the war like Kaido, with promises of the real Joy Boy coming to Wano soon enough, unlike Ace. Shanks himself went to stop the war for two main reasons, one being to uphold his deal to stop chaos consuming the world like Blackbeard, and two, to protect Luffy from getting killed. This entire deal Shanks has with the Gorosei helps dramatize Shanks' main ideals in life, and that's balance. Even in the new movie coming soon on Shanks, we see him explain to Uta that there is no peace or equality in this world, so this balance Shanks has to maintain is crucial to keeping the world safe. But there's two things to keep in mind when being the god of war. What will exactly cause war and when will war be inevitable? And the one inevitable factor in the world that will bring revolution isn't Dragon, it isn't the Yonko, or it isn't any of the new marines. It's Luffy. And Shanks is 100% aware of the potential Luffy has to change everything. And to piggyback off of Preach, why did Shanks believe that Luffy would awaken his fruit during the 1v1 with Kaido? Or somehow with the CP0 interference that the Gorosei were going to order? Well, it's obvious that Shanks believed in Luffy to awaken his devil fruit, but by convincing the Gorosei, he somehow made it inevitable. The Gorosei's interference by using CP0 catapulted Luffy's awakening to his full potential, and it only happened with the interference as well, not the other two times Luffy was knocked out by Kaido. So it could be that Shanks scared the Gorosei into thinking that 
that Luffy would awaken in order to awaken him. Yeah, I know, it sounds crazy, but when you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. Kind of like a reverse psychology situation. And now, with Luffy awakened and the world in utter disbelief, there's only one person who can control the pure chaos Luffy could create, and that's Shanks, in Elboth specifically. Elboth has been seen as a warrior-spirited island, and with us learning about the true nature of the Warrior of Liberation, there's no better place for Shanks to confront Luffy about the balance of the world and what waging war truly means. We'll also see a kind of teacher-student moment between Luffy and Shanks because of what Luffy's fleet did to Shanks' territory, and he'll have to teach Luffy that gaining a grand fleet is impressive, but learning how to control one is just as important. With a man like Shanks who could meticulously make every move behind the scenes in the One Piece world, including this deal, balance will be a huge concept we must follow and pay attention to. Plus, it's kind of funny that the current symbol of balance in Shanks saved the future one at Marineford and Kobe. I mean, it's not like the One Piece world will just suddenly not exist without Marines after Luffy liberates the world. Balance will be needed to sustain itself, whether the system is built on corruption like the world government, or it's built on complete transparency, like what we hope to see in the future. Alright guys, give it up for Prince of All Anime, a different perspective on the Shanks involvement with the Gordosei. I also think that Elbeth could be a Shanks centric arc, so if it is when Luffy and Shanks finally meet again, it will fit perfectly with Shanks having ties to Vikings like the inspiration for his ship. So a huge thank you to Prince of All Anime, make sure you go subscribe to his channel, and subscribe to mine as well. I will leave the link to his channel in the description, and we do have a past collaboration on his channel. But anyways guys, let me know your thoughts on Shanks relationship with the Gordosei, and YouTube says that you'll enjoy one of these next two videos, so pick one and let's find out if they're right.